Uh, so what were you about to segue to smoothly? Um, I was going to talk about something about taking someone's shirt off. Art. And speaking of art, let's look more guests. Local artist, Micah. I can do it again. Yeah, so let's let's get our wide cam going and try that again. Welcome, local artist and gymnast, Micah. Hi. I would give that like a 10 out of 10 for acrobatics. Um, but like a Four out of ten for being in sync with the music that I was <sighs> playing. I tried, Kelly. Yeah, I know. My best. Yeah. Maybe next time. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So, what are your thoughts on the uh, on M M McConaughey as they're calling it? You know, he was my childhood crush. Um, ever since uh, Brokeback Mountain, <laughs> I just. Can't get enough. <laughs> Was Matthew McConaughey in Brokeback Mountain? I don't. I don't think I've seen either of those movies. So. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> See, you're already doing bits. You were so worried about the bits. I wasn't worried. Happening. I was just like, okay. "What's a bit?" <laughs> well, you you always kind of just seem perennially worried. So, <laughs> fuck off, Kelly. <laughs> oh, I like I like this guest already. Yeah. Yay. Is, yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. So I think we need to get down to our first order of business. What's this about? It's about love. Mm -hmm. It's all about love. Do you think if I frame it? Oh, see, this is where we should have put it. Yeah. Like, Can we make that happen? Do we have any little tables that are like mm. right there? Do you, Josh, you want to just sit under here just the whole time it. and yeah. hold it up? If you move it up a little bit, it'll be perfectly framing Kelly's face. There we go. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. No, we're oh. good. We'll just hang out that. like this the whole time. <laughs> okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> We're doing amazing work so far. <laughs> so I think this is a great time um, for Nicole to read her prepared interview questions while I mop this up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so Micah, as a local artist mm -hmm. and the authority on art in the room, mm -hmm. um, what is art? Baby, don't hurt me. Love that question. Um, I think art is anything that makes you, that takes you out of your, the conscious world that we live in, the everyday realities, the boring kind of capitalist structures that we live in. I think it's something more than just going to the movies, but maybe like less than going to the circus, Some, somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. So like out of the conscious world? A little bit. So, like, morphine is art. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sweet. I'm already excited because you brought a bag of art here, I, haven't you? I did bring a bunch oh, of morphine. Kelly. <laughs> well, I was told to supply my own art supplies, well, and if that I is really the case, I thought it was I a good totally idea to sit it. the drink on the mic stand. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, how anybody could fault me for that. So, anyway, it's great. Uh, the, I'm glad you brought morphine because it will get me off the whiskey. Yeah, I definitely thought that the number that's counting next to the live was the number of guests, and you I was like, "Wow, this is to say that. this is steadily increasing." Like, what? There's so many people watching this. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I saw the next thing. of my closest friends that you were doing this. <laughs> and then I saw the other one that was an I, and I'm like, "Oh, it's zero. Okay, we're good." Yeah. Well, isn't like, well, I mean, you don't have to throw us under the bus like that. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna get viewers. Kelly. I was gonna make a really great <laughs> joke. Yeah, you posted this on your socials, right? I don't know. I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> Sorry. See, Nicole, this is why we used to introduce the show with a fake title so that at least the guests could have an incorrect idea of what the show was called. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I I just felt like I was running out of puns. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. 
I didn't know that well, it would be travesty to everyone in my life if I ever run out of puns. So I can't use them all up on the show. You've just got like one left so that like you're technically it's like ha- keeping a dollar like in a safe at home. So you're never broke. Mm-hmm. Did some weird billionaire do that? What? I don't I know. Think- I might this might be the this might be like the, the contact high from all the whiskey I spilled on myself. <laughs> but there was like. You know those 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 annoying old stories about like oh Jim Carrey wrote himself a check for a million dollars and then he framed it and then he won he a million dollars in movies so he's a good person and there was I don't know I feel like some sort of like I want to say it was like a Bill Gates type it was um some someone who did some incredible gimmick like the I don't know like. I'm making this up completely, but they encased a penny in concrete and like built it into their foundation. So they'd like, they'd, they'd never be broke because they like had a penny. I don't know. I mean, if you own a house, you have a lot more equity than that penny. So I'm really not sure if this is true, but I feel like it, that somebody did that and I'm appropriately angry about it. Yeah. I mean, I heard the best way to become a billionaire is just to hide all of your money in a safe and not invest it or use it to, leverage against other people in order to get them to give you more money. And I heard the best way to become a billionaire is to buy uh, JPEGs of monkeys that have hats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the new thing. Mm -hmm. So this is a, yeah, actually this is a great interview question. So as an artist, um, how do you feel about the fact that you're about to get rich off of NFTs? (laughs) I actually want to puke um, (laughs) everywhere because of that. (laughs) I hate it. (laughs) It's so stupid. That's a fair um, reaction. And so, yeah. I mean, I don't think that's fair because, really- yes, it is stupid. But on the other hand, it's extremely bad for the environment. Which is the best thing. Yeah. So, I, to catch you up to speed <laughs> on um, some earlier episodes of this show, which I still haven't told you the name of, mm-hmm. other than when I told you like six months ago, um, is that we are a pro climate change program. Uh, okay. We're fully in favor of it. Everything about it is good. I mean, were you outside today? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah, I'm against that. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't vote for that more times than I wanted to be, and each time I regretted even more. And um, I, I'm just like extremely glad I did not get smoked by anyone on any of the roads I drove on. So this might be really um, controversial, but I actually really like this weather. Mm-hmm. Go on. I mean, it's not as fun as summer. You can't like prance around and mm-hmm. see the butterflies, but there's mm-hmm. something like bitter about it that just feeds my soul. That's the most emo kid shit I've ever heard. What can I say? <laughs> I'm noticing you're wearing all black under all of the colors. I did bring a Is pink this... outfit and then I kind of chickened out. It's yeah, over there. Yeah, <laughs> you really chickened out on not. Wait, it's over there? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll put it on. All right. We'll, we'll cover for you. Fuck. That's the spirit. Um,. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, sure. <laughs> um, so while she's gone, Nicole, uh, I think we need to have a quick uh, huddle here about how long it's funny to make Josh sit on the floor and at what point it just becomes bullying. I mean, I think it's always been bullying, but I think it just uh, depends how much of that you're willing to accept into your life. Like, I've fully accepted that it's my goal and job in life to bully Josh, but I've also known him for years. So, um, yeah, it's up to you. If, you. if you're not ready to fully commit to um, your darker side, then we should let him up. All right. But well, I'm going to make him play his own intro music. Um, and I'm really gonna just going to enjoy watching him flail at No, he's doing so well. God damn it. Okay, I'm going to maximize the live view because I can only assume he's also going to do incredible. You know what? You're marginally visible in the live camera. I feel like. Yeah. Oh, I'm in your way now. The important thing is not to steal your thunder, but I'm wearing pink now. Hell yeah, Micah. Thanks. Um. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um. No, you stole my thunder. You you can just have it. Go. 
No, it was his thunder because he just got, just walked in. Okay. I should probably turn this thing on now so everyone doesn't have to deal with garbage audio. Yeah, see, I was going to say, like, no matter how mistimed we might get with the video cues or how long we leave the black screen uh, up as the main video source, um, we're never going to fuck up as bad as me not turning my mic on and no one telling me. So, like, it's just always onward and upward from here. Exactly. We, we only get better each episode until we don't. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, I think the only way we could fuck up more is if, yeah, there we go. I was going to say, if we keep this black screen in the center of all of us and we're just all lined up on the side in a column. That's, uh, that's not how you guys prefer to do your Zoom conversations? I mean, I prefer it. I don't like to be center stage, but I hear that it's better for viewers if they can see all of our faces. That makes sense. Even though I look, again, like a twice divorced trucker because I refuse to shave my November mustache halfway into December. So in, in this scenario, which is the divorce that like really led to the aesthetic? Was it the first divorce or the second divorce that kind of broke you? I, I think it's like the first divorce is when you start getting like that five o'clock shadow like every day where they're just like, Jesus, this man does not care enough. But then after that, that gets you like that, that early seduction where it's like he's kind of a bad boy. And then the right. second divorce happens and you're just like, I'm just going to let it all go now. It's over. I'm actually impressed that you got through two divorces successfully. Like, that's got to be hard. Like, there's lawyers and papers involved, like signatures involved. Like, that's work. Well, the best thing to do is start with some fraud by not signing your real name on the marriage certificate. And then te technically it's not a divorce. It's an annulment. But you just call it a divorce to play the victim. Mm -hmm. I like that. Always have a scam ready. Mm hmm so, I mean, I, I'm not sure like how liberally I would throw around the word successfully there, but he did get from A to B in terms of um, not having the partner anymore. And I think that's what matters is the fact that you're able to drag your husk into the next day to face the next punishment. That's that's what our that's what our world is all about. Is everybody here single? Um, define single. Um, that's a good, that's a really, wow. Yeah, first you have to define art, now you have to define single. It means not romantically loving anybody. Uh, that is mutual. <laughs> right, yeah, so if I'm in this weird, like, loveless, or I won't say loveless, because if the person is, like, way into me, and I'm, like, really kind of completely leading them on, um, and, you know, like, gaslighting them, and... Um, really kind of just like giving all these little like peaks of sunshine to imply I'm just about to come around the corner. Like I'm still single then is what you're saying. Cause it's not mutual. Yep. Right. So, so like, it's, it's not a relationship if one of the people is dog shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> so when I'm off at like funky Buddha or whatever, am I dating myself with that? Does that still exist? That's, that's cute. I think you can roll with that. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm off at like, uh, uh, whatever that shitty bar they replaced Elephant Castle with, um, and I'm I'm rolling up to like, you know, the the waitress or the the uh, I guess bartender is what I'm looking for, or like the, you know, the janitor or the cop or whoever's there, and I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'm, you know, single, and I do little air quotes, like, mm -hmm. I'm not lying. I mean, you convince me, but I'm not like the authority on it. I'm just the authority on art. Mm. And speaking of which, um, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's make some art, you guys. So a little um, context for the audience here. So um, as a renowned artist, art historian, art teacher, art critic, um, Mike is going to get us up to speed um, because the thing about our show as it were is a lot of people have made very pointed criticisms to suggest that it's very close to being a podcast and i think the best way to get away from that is to be art because there's absolutely no goddamn way a podcast will ever be art i am the roger ebert of criticizing podcasts they will never be art so you think that by making it and showing people a physical thing we're getting farther away from the horrible podcast world yeah like i think if we become art like if we just merge with art 
then we can just we can use all kinds of really um, fancy terms to define ourselves like oh no it's actually like theater 2.0 or uh, it's like um, counter cultural uh, uh, like living paintings I don't know how artists talk see this is the thing is you need to explain this stuff to us so that we can have cred I thought that was really actually fucking horrible <laughs> What about what about avant-garde audiovisual media presentation? I love that. Yeah, see, this is why we keep you around. Oh, fair enough. You're you're the you're the labels guy. Okay, can you tell I us what avant-garde actually means, though, or did you just say that to sound smart? Uh, oh, it's totally the latter. I have no idea what that means. I feel like every time someone uses avant-garde, it's just like I want to pretend that I've made a movie that nobody's ever made before, and this is the way I'm going to do it. Perfect. Well, and that's, that's really what that's we're doing right now, is we're making yeah. a movie no one has ever made before. And that movie is... Kelly Interrupts. That's the movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll laugh at my own joke. Interrupting Fuck is an art form, wouldn't you say, Josh? I'm laughing at my own joke. Fuck you. Uh, so I, I'm really excited about this because I don't know what's in the bag. What's in the bag? Yeah, so I really want... What's in the bag? <laughs> yeah, I really want the... Seven, anybody? No? Nothing. What's in the box? The last scene? I, I, Whoa. I'm i not on. sure. I'm not sure what you're referring to. You guys to. need to watch this movie. It's called Seven. I only Fucking watch horrible. atrocious DVDs that I get for free from older roommates. Do you know about the internet? Never heard of it. Okay, check it out. Try, maybe Google it. <laughs> Is that the David Fincher <laughs> film, Seven? Get... I'm sorry, I don't know the director, but okay, well. um, it's very, very good. I still have to get through this backlog of terrible old movies. Like, I still haven't figured out if Lucky Never Slevin is terrible or not. I thought it was terrible. So I kind of watched it, like, I put it on the background while I was watching, while I was playing a video game. And then I noticed that, like, because there's some things that you can absolutely do anything while watching them. So probably the worst movie in the pile was P.S. I Love You, which is an absolutely impenetrable film. I don't understand what the point of it is. But you and know what's happening. And you didn't want to fuck it? In uh, no, that I couldn't. Like, I tried. But, like, the, you know, like, the old DVD cases had um, those little holes, like, cut into them in, like, the big, like, recycle logo, even though you mm -hmm. can't recycle the cases. Mm -hmm. um, but they stopped putting those in, so you can't. The you big can't, holes? Yeah, yeah, I can't put my dick through it. Yeah. And like I've tried, I, I've tried getting my dick through the DVD itself. Like I can almost do it. <laughs> like it's it's so close, but it's just I the hemorrhaging know. isn't worth it, dude. It's not worth it. That's my point. Well, I think if you like grab it from the other side by like the foreskin and like yank it through, it'll like pull it straight enough. Because like if you're wow, shaking, Nicole, assuming I have a foreskin, <laughs> the, like the audacity. <laughs> I mean, if you're so, my point is, if you're trying to like your circumcised through, phobia is showing bunch up and like plug that hole, but if you like reach through from the inside with like maybe a pair of tweezers and like yank it through. Then you're straight. Yeah, you're right, there. Nicole. This and a lot of things would be easier if I had a foreskin. You're literally just being ableist. Yeah, that's this is, fair. This is I'm very sorry, traumatizing to me. Why? <laughs> the idea of tweezing foreskin. Just, that don't land, chief. That don't land. <laughs> it might land for some people. That's fair. Yeah, that that is fair. I, I, I have to admit that it is probably fair. As much as I'm loath to admit it. Anyways, okay. time. Go on. So it was an impact. We, we're, we're getting off on tangents. We have yeah. to get back to the fact of the matter, which is when I put on Lucky Number Eleven in the background, I discovered very quickly that it has a very convoluted plot. But because I wasn't paying attention, I don't know if it was like good convoluted or bad convoluted. Um, well, I was talking about the movie Seven with Morgan Freeman, and um... yeah, but I haven't seen it because I'm watching absolute tripe like. Um, I don't want to come back to P.S. I Love You because there were like five or six other terrible movies that I watched um, from this pile of free DVDs. I wonder what it's like to still be in DVD land. It's really good um, <laughs> because it doesn't challenge you so much. Like when I w log into Netflix, just immediate anxiety because oh, yeah. how do you choose it from there? I hate it. So, no. But when you, when you have a pile of DVD cases that you got for free because like somehow even when you're too cheap to pay for Netflix... Like, this is a way to watch movies even cheaper. 
and you go, do I want to watch this weird, uh, like, distributor copy of something called The Dreamers, which is advertised as, like, a weird... Uh, no, it's advertised as, like... Um, what's the opposite of weird? Like, a very respectable, like, erotica movie? So it's, like, softer than softcore porn, I think? I haven't watched it yet. It's still in the pile. How is it still but in the pile? Because like the it's... the first movie you should have watched. Well, I was like, you know what? Maybe this proof of life is going to be good. And it's just like Russell Crowe running through a jungle and looking gritty. And like, I can't even remember what happens. Somebody gets chased and then somebody gets rescued. It's about as generic as they come. I think everybody should just drop off all their old DVDs at Kelly's place. Uh, I absolutely think this should be part of the show. Um, If you drop off a movie, I will watch it. You have to hand deliver it to my house um, here at the the studio. So um, our I live in a community house, and one of my housemates is getting rid of this. You know those big, massive like DVD binders that are like she, there's like sheets. Yeah, of I have them. one of them. We have one that's like full of movies that someone just burned, and they're all like it's all written like holes. Okay, if you can't give me the binder, like I need one movie at a time. Okay, I think there's going to be a limit. A like each individual. <laughs> can only put one movie on the backlog list until the whole backlog is cleared. So if like 400 people come and drop a movie in my house, I, you can't put a second movie on until I've gotten through mm-hmm. the other, like, cause every, you know, at one person at a time. Okay. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. I feel like we had an episode a while ago where I asked the question, what do I do with my old DVD porn? Like, how do I get rid of it? And you did not say drop it off at my house. And if I known that was an option, I would have done that. Porn's different. Porn's not a movie. It, sure it is. It can be. What's masquerading as a movie? It has What's very realistic scenarios, like getting your plumbing fixed and then getting your plumbing fixed. See, here, here's the thing I believe for a long time, and this I ironically believe, is that I would take, I would consider porn movies movies if they were like real movies with like a constructed plot and like they're casting actors and they just add the fucking and be like, that's just part of the art for the fucking is just going to be what's in the movie. That's just like the method acting of it. But like when you clearly have like a flimsy pretext of something happening around the fucking, that's when you're making porn. Like I want to see like, like this is my challenge to porn directors is I want you to make like a full pornographic movie, everything going in everywhere, everyone and everyone else just, you know, smashing pissers, smashing whatever parts of them they need to smash. But enthrall me so much with the plot, the character art, the cinematography that I like forget to jerk off. Then you've made a movie. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make you watch Antichrist. I'm so excited to watch whatever you, yeah. <laughs> Just put it in the mailbox. That's going to be the deal. Uh, yes, of course. So it's actually put it in the mailbox is the name of the old porn D- the old porn DVD I'm trying to get rid of. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> it's funny how these things just tie together. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe you guys were about to do art though before we went on what appears to be like almost a ten minute tangent on Kelly's DVD problem. <laughs> I the thing is after last week of like you know, kind of um, sticking to a script. I, I want to, no, I have to say this in a way that is constructive. Um, after last week interviewing the most earnest man on the planet who is like infallible in his dedication to reality, which is what you want from a journalist, um, really is just kind of swinging the pendulum the other way. And I just can't not be doing a bit right now. No, I mean, it's fair enough. It's fair enough. Uh, you you really almost restrained yourself last time. So, I mean, it makes sense that it would swing back in a similarly aggressive manner. Yeah. Well, like, if they, if I, I can't make this clear, I can't make this any more clear. Sorry, it's all the whiskey I spelled on me. That the, if there's one thing that people should take away from watching this show, it's they just are absolutely floored by the jarring tonal shifts, whether that's moment to moment, episode to episode, um, like 
segment to segment. I don't know. I needed a third thing. Um, I just, I don't want anyone to get too comfortable. You know, like having on their gross ass feet up on the couch. Look, it's never going to stop. You can't stop me. I think it's really adorable how they both have their feet up on the couch personally. <laughs> I mean, it just looks better than this. <laughs> Plus, we're gonna get the we're gonna get the Tarantino market now. Is that is are that you, a thing? Are you sitting on that thing just so it makes you higher up? I'm, um, I'm talking. It was more comfortable, and also, oh, okay. yeah. All right. I'm sorry. Like, were you the feet 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 feet? Put your feet yes, on the couch. Yes, I was. Uh, no, Tarantino always has weird feet stuff yeah. in his in his movies. <laughs> like it's consistent, and once you learn about it, you can't not see it, and oh, it becomes I'm, a problem. I'm familiar. Yeah. I'm why Kelly has such a weird aversion to people putting their feet on the couch. Like, how do you sit on the couch, Kelly? Um, upright with good posture, staring directly into the camera, um, holding the microphone exactly half an inch from my chin, like a normal person sits on the couch. Yeah, that sounds normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, let's get into this art. <laughs> now the Tarantino audience is really That's in. That's right. I don't think anyone can see your foot. You need to I was. Well, it's there. on. Oh, okay, yeah. I was I was looking at the wide camera. Do that Sharon Stone shit from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Sharon Stone? I don't know. I'm trying to remember shit. <laughs> when you said Sharon Stone, I was thinking of the the classic. Oh, what's it called? Um, basic Instinct. Basic Instinct thing. Well, you should definitely do that, Kelly. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, I'll do the Basic Instinct thing, but I don't think she did that in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. No, I don't remember who it was anymore, and I don't care. What oh, you're, th you're thinking of Sharon Tate. Shit, man, I don't know. I didn't even Sharon like the movie. Sharon Stone was not murdered by Charles Manson. I'm pretty sure she's still alive. I mean, if Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is to be believed, so is Tate. That's a terrible joke. Please, please cut that in post. <laughs> <laughs> Should not be making light of the fact Charles Manson killed a lot of people, or his family killed a lot of people. Mm -mm. That's very bad. <laughs> but here we are. Must power on despite that. <laughs> oh damn! Hold on, I can put my feet in the heart. I was thinking about that. Yeah, I was. Asking. So actually, what is the heart? You guys never explained that. It, it's about love. Is that? Yep. It, it was just a prop that showed up this show, and I didn't. I didn't ask. It's uh, one of the things that I brought, and it just symbolizes love. It also lights up pink, but the camera kind of sucks. So. Wow. Can't see it. Wow. You would say that the camera I paid fifteen dollars <laughs> for on Kijiji sucks. You come into my house and you say that. Kevin, let it spill your whiskey again. Well, okay, I'm going to move. It's it. some whiskey business. It lights up. All right. So, Nicole, I'm going to need you to do some production here. And I need you to make my camera the full screen um, so that I can use this as the episode thumbnail. I was hoping um, I would get into the thumbnail, I, but that's fine. I think I previously <laughs> stated I'm, I'm not logged in as the host, so I cannot do that. Why aren't you? <sighs> okay, no, it's fine. Everyone, talk I amongst yourselves. On the link. What? I just clicked on the link. Yeah, well, you should be logged in and shit. It's fine. You guys just have a good conversation, and I'm gonna mess with the scene. I mean, a good conversation would be look at how ridiculous Kelly is being over there that we can all see in the widescreen camera until he changes it. <laughs> Ew. Yeah, see, there Ew. we go. This is what's going to get the viewers. Yeah. Would it be. All right, I'm it, done with this bit. If it's that, if that, you're using that as the picture, is it still a thumbnail or is it a footprint? The toenail. Mm. But um, I like that. Five stars. Thank you. Would recommend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm not making any more jokes until these art supplies come out because, goddamn, they're going to come out. But All right, I'm ready. My body is ready. supposed to be a threat? <laughs> yeah, I have you a glue gun point. Would you like me to just show you them or, like, tell you what to do with them? I so, shouldn't give you options, should I? I don't know. Like, you... So, just returning to our thesis statement, the show has to become art. As the only real artist here, you have to help us make the show art. So... um with Josh and I, you have the supplies that are in your bag, and with Nicole, you have whatever she's holding in front of her. Oh, so we're collaborating. I thought this was like that you two were in art class, and I was the teacher, and I was going to grade you. That's what I thought no, was happening. No, you're going to teach us, and you're going to grade us. No, you are correct. I would say it's the three of us, but you're we're, you're going to, like, it's, it's like a full art class. First, you give us the assignment. You explain how art works. 
we make the art and then you grade us. That was my thought. We can workshop it. I'm open to whatever. I hope you all know that once we do this, my life goals will all be reached and I will have no other mission in life. Mm. So. Mm. Well, I mean, it'll free up time if you want to, like, I don't know, do like production on a live stream or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I picked out um, a couple of special items. Mm Mm-hmm. So these are some gloves you oh, can put on. All right. So the backstory behind these is kind of, um, it's pretty intimate. So <laughs> I had to wear these um, while, uh, for a job. Birthing a calf. Let's just put it this way. It was for a job that I had um, in someone's home where um, I was in contact with their body. <laughs> All right, and I don't want you to explain what the job is. I just want Nicole to speculate on it. Um, or I'm assuming you were like a massage therapist, or uh, maybe a Reiki. Um, professional. No, no, but in a sense, yeah. Well, the whole point of Reiki is you don't touch them. That's just silly. Keep in mind, these gloves go all the way up to the shoulder. You might have to take off the sweater. Let's do just a costume. Let's do a full costume. Well, I know a lot of people that are. But I already have one on. Okay. I'm assuming if you're wearing gloves, it was going to be like some sort of like caretaking thing, like maybe a sponge bath or um, like foot massage. Yeah, it was it was caretaking kind of stuff. Okay. We can leave it at that. <laughs> um, These can just go over the sleeve, right? Sure. They look like they are designed for like one size fits all with the arms. Like mm-hmm. I could just have ham hocks going on. There they should be some like- ASMR happening. Oh yeah, that's good. That crinkle, though. So, okay, are these gloves part? Like, are these gloves part of the art, or are they facilitating the art? Like, are they just keeping me clean while I make art? Like, if you're just getting me to finger paint, and you don't want to wash my hands after. These are because you keep spilling. <laughs> I'm I'm really <laughs> impressed that you managed to predict the fact that I would spill the whiskey. On I know twice. you really well, Kelly. I've I've <sighs> you I've met not. you about four or five times. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing coming out of the bag mm-hmm. is some yeah. some pink slippers, which I think we should give to the absent Josh mm-hmm. when he comes back mm-hmm. to deal with. Where did he go? I don't know. I'm guessing to the bathroom. Hmm. So um, should we keep going? Or, Nicole, what do you have? Um, I mean, well, I got the gloves on. Should I just go in there and help him? So he oh, can... that's a great idea. You can wipe his butt. Yeah. Yeah, it do, they do kind of look like those gloves that you would wear if you were like checking a cow. So like you could probably just get right up there. Oh, couldn't wait till the end. Into what? Into the oh, to take out the calf. You I'm mean? just a prop. Don't worry about oh, me. Yeah. yeah, generally, but I mean, in this case, if Josh needed help birthing his own, <laughs> um, we did have gloves ready in case he needed help in there. Oh, yeah. perfect, perfect. Well, you know. Better safe than sorry, right? Mm-hmm. So these are your your art materials. These are my art materials. Does oh my god, they so need to pretty. be plugged in. Only if you're gonna glue something. Well, I don't know. Is that is that not why you brought it? I kind of expected you. Or guys were to you also... purely setting me up for the joke of threatening you with it? I... You know, because sometimes I, I'm I too almost want to pivot away from art and like get you to explain how <laughs> you predict the future so effectively. Like you predicted every turn of where we're gonna go with this. Um, I have special powers. Fuck. Yeah. Sorry, guys. That's so cool. So, um, I kind of expected you guys to bring a couple of things, too, and then you can maybe use the glue gun to put them all together, but it turns out it was just me, so... I have some wood. The next thing is some rope. Do you want me to get the wood? Sure. Yeah, that's appropriate. Right. You can't ask our yes. guests that. I just um, did. You can ask me that. These are lawsuits waiting to happen, Kelly. Oh my god, those boots are adorable. Do you like them? I just got them. Oh man. I think man. they're fucking ridiculous. But those they are absurd. Make, I love them. They needed to make an appearance. Are they Close denim out. with pink fringe? Yeah. That's yes. Wonderful. I know. Look at that. They're like half Calgary, half, I don't know, New York. I would say like San Francisco personally, but I might be stereotyping at that point. Hmm. They're like cupcake boots. 
Wear high fashion. I'm into it. <laughs> high fashion because it's got a heel, of course. Yeah. Ele elevated fashion, if you will. Are you saying that you wish you had a pair? I'm kind yeah. of jealous. Although anytime that I've ever like worn cowboy boots, it's gone poorly for me, usually with me getting bucked off a horse. So I don't know. I think I should leave it to the experts. I feel like most Albertans who wear cowboy boots don't actually ride horses. They just drink. I mean, welcome to my problems when, when uh, Edmonton hosted the CFR and I got to look at every clean press person like i'm a cowboy now no no you're I, not i when i first moved to calgary i got out i was at the gas station um i got out of my car and what was it i can't remember exactly what happened but the guy that was on the opposite side of the pump got out of his truck looked at me tipped his cowboy hat and said ma'am Oh and I was God. like, fuck my life. <laughs> did, you, did you get his number? That's <laughs> that is brutal. Yeah, Holy shit. The worst day of my life. Um, so sorry for making you guys live through that with me. But Do you live in Calgary? I do. I'm actually going to Calgary for an artist residency from March to April of next year. Oh, cool. If yeah. you yeah, if you have time or if you would like to hang out, please hit me up. I... That would be great. Hey, no networking. We're making art. <laughs> isn't oh, yeah. isn't art just networking with the soul? Yes. Mm. Deep. I'm, I'm just Deep. I'm just wow. throwing stuff out here to see what sticks to the canvas. <laughs> You'd be amazed what sticks to the canvas. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I brought out. I don't know if those are art supplies, but they are building materials. <laughs> I also have sharpies. And apparently just some tie-up wire? Yeah. Well, you know, some things, sometimes things got to get tied up. That's, I suppose. We'll leave it at that. She just brought a spool of this from work, I guess. So we also have a wig. Mm -hmm. Would you like to wear this? Uh, yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Um, I also have some latex cha uh, assless chaps. Is the tag the back? I think so. Those are incredible as well. You seem really into all of my stuff. I mean, I'm it's really cool glad. stuff. This is awesome. I feel like I have a fan. Um, some cuffs. Also ridiculous. Sure. Um, yes, I'm so glad you're wearing that. <laughs> well, it's a wig. What did you expect me to do with it? I'm just, this is just what I envisioned, and I'm glad <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> yeah, well, this is why we had you on the show, because you were a facilitator of <laughs> chaos and good vibes, and... Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. How does a person fit into these? They're pretty tight, um, but you just squeeze in. Ah, fair enough. Squeeze it all in, you know. I got some coconut oil, Josh. We need some help. <laughs> oh my god, yes. I believe we're making like live stream history with like <laughs> I don't know if everyone anyone has ever put on like a new. I, what am I saying? Of course, someone's done. Yeah, this. come on like, now. First I'm, time squeezing into a pair of chaps like this I mean, has got to be that's probably an entire category i mean porn sites have live streaming services now you're going to tell me that nobody's done that right but it's like movies is that this isn't porn this is just like real serious art that happens to have nudity in it once uh, you take your pants yeah. off like uh like the old uh 1970s 1980s french film uh movement where you're just like oh there's an ass in there but it's art an artistic ass i couldn't have put it better myself yeah I, I endeavor to be an artistic ass. Is that a balaclava? Yeah, so I, I commissioned a friend of mine to crochet me some balaclavas. This is one of them. Um, yep. Would anybody like to wear it? When you rob a billionaire's house, you're going to be the most stylish robber out there. Oh my god, it's like I'm going to be the gay IRA. Well, I can't have, <laughs> I can't have this and... Uh, you actually can. You totally I've done can. It. Wait, you just squeeze, it... just try really hard to squeeze it. Also, <laughs> also... <laughs> Is the wig gonna go? The wig will go over. It'll just thing, flatten. Right? No, un under. I under. mean, it's up to you. But I think I'm gonna put it under. I'm not. I'm not you. feeling artistic yet. I haven't learned anything. I've no. just been directed to do things. Well, there isn't always clear instruction when you're in an art class. It's kind of just like, here are some materials and here's a space. Go have fun. Also, now I'm envisioning the gay R IRA, and I'm I'm loving it. I should have said IR gay, but. <laughs> 
It's too late now. We've moved past that. Yeah, it's tight around the head. I know. Just keep going. <laughs> there you go. Tight around the head is a way I prefer it. Wait, I feel like um, I missed the eye holes. Yeah, there's something on your chin. What's that? That's a hole of some this kind. Is a hole. It looks like it's somehow. Oh, oh just there you go. A little bit, just up a bit. Yeah. A little bit more there, and now. Now you've got it. two eyes and a mouth. There you go. There you go. There's just like a bit of a bit of extra on the top, just a <laughs> little fine. extra. Use... Are you <laughs> supposed to leave that? Actually? Yeah, I was about to say you're supposed to leave a little pinch of the top. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's gonna get glass. covered by the wigs, so this, that's the thing. This that's... is why I didn't give you guys my last name, so no one in my family can Google <laughs> this and Google me and find this. <laughs> that's fair. That's also why I don't use my last name. Like, if you give me. A hundred dollars right now. I will not say your last name. <laughs> you look so fucking creepy. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yep. Oh we need you next. We need your terrorist video. <laughs> it kind of looks like chain mail, which is kind of sweet. Like you're like the fucking sweetest knight that ever lived. <laughs> That's you're right. You're like Sir Gawain. So I guess what we should do is That's kind of what my just Tinder like profile says. we should all just get into it, and then um, Nicole can draw us or paint us all. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, oh okay. Cool. So like she has the art supplies, and we are just like we're, like, we're the subjects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? All right, I'm into that. Do you have your supplies ready, Nicole? Yeah, absolutely. So I wasn't told what I was supposed to bring for art supplies. So I you said you were going to bring paint, so that was your idea. Crayola ah, Crayola yeah. markers. Hell yeah. Um, it says they're preferred That's by teachers. Paint. Um. I also have a little drawing board going full Mr. Dress up here. So oh, man. I do have paints I can use. I just thought it would be, I feel like it's more in my wheelhouse to use jumbo markers. Um, I'm more experienced with them. I understand. I also Josh, have a would you like to wear a wig or would you like to wear this hat that I'm wearing? Uh, I can do a wig. That's the right I answer. have another cowboy hat if we're going cowboy themed. Wow. Yeah, we do need that. We're on top of the wig. All right. Okay. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and start here. That is a gorgeous wig. That is just my style right there. <laughs> I'm so glad you're into this. It's not what I would have expected based on um, you. <laughs> <laughs> I have cross dressed more times in my life than are probably expected of people who look like me. <laughs> So who needs the cowboy hat? Do you need a third accessory or do you <clears throat> feel comfortable? Notice. Yeah. I yeah, I think you should throw that on. Uh, there we go. Wow. I mean I know? feel like I've met this dude at like a festival or a certain kind of bar. You're, I don't know. You're fully transformed. Perfect. Even better. Like, Let's hear your cowboy voice. Well, cowboys, we're going out riding today, and the best thing to ride these days is actually another cowboy. Howdy. No, 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 no. Now the bit really starts. I have you on the main feed. Well, my little heifers, at some point, you're going to have to go out into the past of your life. And in order to find out what you were going to eat in that past of your life, you're going to have to sift through a whole lot of shit. That's the pep talk for you little heifers out there. Remember, your grass is not always greener on the other side. That's that's all I have for that bit. It's a sad cowboy. It's a sad cowboy. What about riding cowboys? I like that part. <laughs> I mean, I'm just taking um, verses from what might be the greatest band to ever walk this earth, Big and Rich. If uh, my high school was anything to go by. See, that's this is my issue with Big and Rich, is that I feel like save a horse, ride a cowboy is a false dichotomy. You can ride both. You know? I mean, you can. You can. Have it both ways. Um, I guess my issue with yeah. that is that horses can't really consent, so... Yeah, in fact, we, we call it breaking horses, which seems just like the opposite of consent when you're Sorry. training them to be ridden. We call it what? Oh, breaking them. Jesus. Yeah, breaking a horse. What did you think I said, Nicole? I heard boinking. <laughs> <laughs> now we save the cows for that. Mm. Oh. oh, boy. We need to use all of these things. Oh, speaking um, of the cross dressing, I, though, do you remember the fairy princess costume from like, that's got to be almost 10 years ago now? 
Like for Halloween? Yeah. Were you a fairy princess? Oh yeah, you had wings. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah, we had to bust them off halfway through the night night because they were just falling apart. Right. What do you feel about this thing? It's like a boat. Yeah. It is like a boat. That's all I got. See, I'm not thinking artistically. I just look at the shape and I go, oh, this is a this is a boat. That's wonderful. All right. But I feel like I need to glue it to something before it becomes I, art. I actually I'm okay with you gluing that to something. I don't okay. care too much about that. Um maybe some some wood is that what we're thinking <laughs> well, we've got wood over there let's do it and if uh if josh reaches under his feet there is an extension cord that we can plug the is this russian yeah what does it say was that one that one says listovaya kapusta uh it's like uh, it's essentially it's the best transition i could figure out for like russian for kale because like <laughs> it just means like it literally means leafy cabbage Apparently, kale is cabbage. Oh, these are garden things. Yeah, these That's were for my amazing. garden, and then I, uh, the, okay. you know, the garden died because it was fall, and so I put these away. And then the motivation I had for learning Russian got real shitty on me, and so now it's just like a weird artifact of my life. We don't have time to get into it. We're doing art. So you don't want to glue kale to the pink thing. I mean, maybe you do. I shouldn't tell you these things. Um, no, absolutely. These are all trash. I, I completely renounce the Russian language and anyone who speaks it. So None of this looks Some like of them real. are like now the feet for our camera rig. So like that, that's I've already disassembled some of them and repurposed them. There's something really nice about these. They're very homely, you know? Yeah. Homely? It might just Are be you like... saying they're very plain looking and ugly? Yes. Oh. That's not what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Throw but back cool when way. I was 17 and my, or my 15 and my brother told me I was homely. Oh, that that's rough. Time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. God, it's almost as bad as the time that she was like 28 and her boyfriend told her she was homely. <laughs> yeah. That was fine. <laughs> I do have a degradation kink, so it worked out well for, for all parties involved. He thought some that of them aren't. Or, there's even some scraps of wood in there that are not glued together. If that'll save us some time, or not screwed together, or I can get the screwdriver and pull them apart. Uh, sure. I mean, yeah. You could like fold that boat thing into it. Oh shit! Oh damn, man! Oh damn! There, the this, sheriff is in prison. This is a country song waiting to happen right now. Okay. This is literally the French title of Blazing Saddles. I have a bilingual DVD, and the French uh, title of Blazing Saddles is Le Sheriff est en prison. The Sheriff is in prison. Well, that uh, that does sum up the movie. Is that what happens in the movie? I watched it like once. I thought it was very overrated. Let's bleep that out because I'm going to get canceled. But I mean, Young Frankenstein is better, but it's a good movie. Sure. I'll accept that. Oh, now I got freedom for having a good take on uh, Mel Brooks films. No, I like Mel Brooks. I think Blazing Saddles is my least favorite Mel Brooks film I've seen. What is your most favorite? I mean, obviously it's Spaceballs. That is fair. I like how we, with the wide cam, we have the behind the scenes now <laughs> of the co-host cam. Yeah, like it's, you're not fooling anyone. To... <laughs> Here, we'll just have to Wait, hide the, Kelly. we'll have to hide the wide cam. Hold on. Well, see now, now it's ab the illusion is absolutely flawless. Holy shit! You have an easel, like this is some incredible Bob Rossness. Mm. I think what would really complete the illusion is if you were able to put like a some sort of prison-looking thing over all three cameras because we are clearly in the same room. I'm uh, I'm more impressed with. You're right. We can just turn Josh off. All Nicole. right. Well, she can I still hear it through the shotgun mic, damn it. No, your mic is still on. Your camera's oh. just off. Uh, I didn't. All right. Uh, Mr. Dress stuff more than uh, Bob Ross, because while I appreciate Bob Ross, like, Mr. Dress up is like a childhood fucking memory that is. Oh, sorry. I'm kind of still interested in those assless chaps and how one would squeeze you, into that. You can do oh. this. I believe in you. Should I attempt to squeeze into these assless chaps? Yeah, we told you this like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, okay. no, I, don't, I don't have to take you. 
Like, I like that you're asking a question. Like, you think that anyone is going to say no, but, like, clearly <laughs> no one is going to say yes. that. Allow me to go into the changing See, room See, and this is what people who are going to watch this recording are going to be so bummed out on that they miss the chance to be the commenter in the live stream saying whether, like, we would say vote now on your phones. Do you want Josh to put on the assless chaps on camera or off camera? I, I think you need to take off the pants just yeah. so you know. Okay. Oh, he's going. Oh, man. Look at that no, guy. No, it's going to be uncomfortable and awkward. We can give him some, some peace. Yeah, uncomfortable and awkward. That's what I wanted. That's what I brought you here for. I mean, I wouldn't do it on camera. Okay. Well, I mean, that's borderline reasonable, but we'll I'm let it go. You know, I already got an email about like how because i like i don't check the actual gmail account for this show it only exists to allow us to create a youtube account and i kind of just logged into it trying to i don't remember what i was doing but um there were all these emails from youtube saying like hey we may have like reviewed your video for flagging it may not it may be an 18 plus video but it wasn't even the ones where we talked about like i don't know who's your hottest cousin or i don't know what are the other like very troubling things we've talked about, Nicole. Um, I don't think we ever talk about anything troubling or problematic. Or yeah, it was a really innocuous one, like talking about board games or something. But that was the one that got flagged. So I didn't do anything about it. I have no idea if people can still watch that clip on YouTube. But So fun side story. Yeah. I tried to learn to knit once, and this is what I made. Oh, it's like a cock warmer. <laughs> yeah. Is it a knit condom? You know, I was going for a scarf, and then it just looked very phallic. It is a so tiny scarf. Yeah. yeah, like, is this, like, scarf for a fetus? Yeah. Okay. Is this a scarf for ants? That's thoughtful. No one ever knit scarves for fetuses, so. So, the hot, the glue gun is is currently plugged in. It's hot. It's steaming hot. Okay. So, um, also, my hands are really sweaty. Is that part of the art? <laughs> you can take them off if you want. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to, speak of getting naked, I'm just going <laughs> to disrobe this like nice yeah from the table. don't get in don't yeah oh, that actually fits. it's already oh a whiskey on oh my god i'm so excited my dreams might be coming true right now someone else wearing asses traps for once all you had to do was ask <laughs> yeah honestly my ass has been seen probably more than it should have nicole only you can hear the shotgun mic can you hear what he's saying no not at all Okay, well, what he he's was, saying is, ooh wee, mommy, it feels so good. I also, love wearing these chaps. He also said that he was being very self-deprecating and said that basically That's, no one would like to see his butt, but we do want we do want to see it. Well, this is what you oh my god, up on the yeah. couch, on the couch. All right. there we go. So yeah. the chaps are assless, wow. but the boxers are not. So already I'm, I'm, my meter is leaning toward cop-out. Well, I mean, again, oh I no! Pop out rather than cock out. Yeah, but think of how we would take off on OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah. Really fast on OnlyFans. I'm gonna wear these for that. I was gonna say, that, please leave your underwear. There's no, you don't get an option. I don't know why you think that's like a decision you get to make. <laughs> you're gonna get hot and sweaty. I'm, you're lucky you're not dancing. That's fair. That's fair. I've never been one for dancing. However, I might be one for assless chaps now. Did you miss the boots, Kelly? Yeah, let's, um, let's draw attention yeah, to those boots. boots are good. They're great good they boots. Are. I'm, I, I would never besmirch those boots. I'm just trying to get a song that uh, um, that uh, Josh can dance to. I, I am not going to show. dance. I will wear asses chaps, but I will not dance. I'm sorry. All right, we're just going to glare at you while the song plays. That's fair. Well, you could dance, please. Please, you dance again. That. Look at those guys dancing. That's, that, that's the spirit of country right there. Yeah, the Ranger is playing this song on the harmonica. Yeah, that's, that's the real country vibe. It's the assless cats, the cowboy hats, and the potentially copyright violating songs. Hell yeah. Drip. Yeah, don't drip on this like vintage. Don't drip on the vintage couch. It's gonna make it hard, Kelly. It's gonna drip. This this thing is made of garbage wood. Okay, put all the things on here that are going to. Well, your uh, your boat thing plus that. Can I have the boat There's back? There's the here. I'll see. Should probably close the big window again. I'm willing to give up my first knitting project for this art project. This is sac true sacrifice, you guys. Mm -hmm. 
for art. Oh, okay. Nicole didn't want to get it rid of it. Oh, no, she can't. Oh, yeah. fucking hot. Ooh. Ow. Ooh. Do you want me to go over there and do who, that? Who put the mouse next to the... <laughs> God damn. Who let Kelly use a hot glue gun? I mean, if you saw how poorly I handled a normal of, uh, thing as a glass of whiskey, I don't know why you trust, trust me with a hot glue gun. Oh, well, look who's fucking smart. <laughs> Oh, wow. Look at that. I hope everyone is watching in HD. You can see her last name on the glue gun. What? Yeah. There's no HD here. It's, no, it's in 720p. They're going to be like, <laughs> Mike uh, Obama? Like, they're not going to be able to read it. Yeah. Anyway, talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to go get a screwdriver to disassemble these. Oh. Also, I like the well, glue gun as a prop. Are you saying that it should just be part of it? It's perfect the way it is. <laughs> Sorry, what was that, Nicole? I said I like the glue gun as a prop because you guys are dressed as cowboys and... Yeah. Now we got six shooters. Bank robber, so yeah, that's true. This is this is literally like cowboys and robbers, like a combination of like cops and robbers and cowboys and respectfully represented indigenous peoples. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to know what you think of this idea, Josh, because when I brought it up with David before, he didn't think it was a good idea. What's that? So, like, imagine like a tabletop adventure, right? Yes, and it's called. Cowboys and Indians, but, but, hear me out. Like, literally Indians. I mean, what if you made it like a Bollywood production? Yeah, that, like, no, no, like yeah. cowboys and people from India. That probably yeah. exists. Yeah. yeah, no, but I'm, I, what I'm saying is and that. And we'll do could, all the accents. We can ooh, probably. Maybe not do that part. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, you I'm could actually have like. I lost David, too. <laughs> David was like, oh, yeah, you guys can do that on a show when I'm not involved. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying that, like, you could, you're probably right now. There's already a Bollywood like cowboys thing because there's, there's a, uh, there's a Korean spaghetti western called The Good, The Bad, and The Weird. So I feel like if South Korea has done it, then Bollywood has definitely done it. Okay, so if the three of us are dressed up, are the good, the bad, and the weird? Who, who's which? No, it's fine. We'll just do. It'll, it'll be fine. You're probably the good. That's right. I am the good. I'm the bad. Probably. I am wearing assless chaps. With underwear on, which would be like considered weird, I feel. Can you believe people make normal art? <laughs> How do they have fun? <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of what I'm trying to figure out what else to add to my painting, but I kind of feel like it's finished. So it's looking good so far. Thanks. Um, there's oh, Kelly wow. in jail, clearly. Um, and there is Micah on the couch in the middle here. I decided not to draw anyone's faces because I realized that was the easiest way to ruin my painting. Um, and then here's Josh over here. Um, I just highlighted the important things. Um, I started on the assless chaps, but clearly I didn't get very far before I realized that they're highly disproportionate to the rest of your head. So. <laughs> I appreciate the effort, nonetheless. Thanks. Um, I also love, I love the way that I look in that. Thank you. I feel very flattered. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> I may have known, I may not told you this, but I am clearly an artist myself. Uh, and you'll be happy to know that we're actually going to tokenize that and put it on the blockchain. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, please pay me one million dollars for this NFT. <laughs> Listen, um, nothing is less fungible than this boat because I dare you to make another one of these. <laughs> just try it. Mm -hmm. Just fucking try it. God, I, I was really glad to hear you just go off on NFTs because, like, as yeah. someone who's poisoned their mind on Twitter for far too long, I see them now way too often and I want to, like, stove my head in every time I see one now, especially those goddamn monkeys. You know, those were a scam, right? It's I mean, all a scam. No, 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 no. People literally got scammed out of the monkey money. I mean, again, it's all a scam. Also, Sorry, someone pirated a bunch of money? NFTs. So it's all a pirate. I know. The best part was though is that everyone's just like, ah, yes, they're non fungible, and then someone pirated them, and they're like, oh my god, they funged the tokens. Use that too. This thing is gonna be beautiful when it's done. Okay, can I have that one back? No, no, no I'm gonna use it as like a brace. I felt real bad. This uh, artist that I know posted on their uh, Facebook something about. She posted, or the yeah, they posted something about their art, um, and then someone else, someone commented about how they should start selling NFTs. And this person was like, "I don't know what that is." And then someone was like, "Oh, you should look it up. It looks really cool." Um, I was just like, I felt so bad for 
that person and I was like, please don't look that up. Please don't ruin your life like that. Just please continue making the art that you make and <laughs> making people happy yeah. with it. Do not fall for the crypto bro scams. So uh, as you guys may know, the best part of Crayola um, markers is that you can turn them into lightsabers and fight your friends with them. So, And then your first swing, they just disintegrate immediately. Josh, this is a very sturdy weapon. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I love how like the first thing that kids think about when they like start stacking stuff like that is like, I've made a sword. I'm going to hit you with it. Like first thought into your head is just like, I have made a great weapon and I'm going to hit someone with this thing, whether they like it or not. Yeah. Well, you watch enough Power Rangers. This is true. Mm -hmm. I would say that'd be a segue, but honestly, if we just keep going with Kelly's art rate here, I don't mind sticking on another week to do more games, <laughs> which I think would make Kelly happy as well, just from a planning perspective. No, this art is done. I mean, what what, what else would you do to add to this boat? I mean, this could be like... <laughs> yeah, you don't have a sail. Okay, well, give me a second while the glue hardens. <laughs> I can keep gluing while we play the game. <laughs> I didn't bring I, any more glue sticks. I yeah, think. I... I mean, I also have a glue gun and glue sticks, but I feel like we should uh, we should honor the game. And oh, I mean, how many? Wait, how many parts were you planning to do to this story? Uh, I mean, this this is in theory I could do a lot longer, but I think I agreed originally to four parts. Okay. Yes. Because if could, you did a fifth, they would take us evenly to the end of December. Oh, that's the scheduling thing. Yeah, I could probably make that happen. To be honest. All right. Let's let's just have these negotiations during the stream. This is the perfect time to do it. <laughs> this yeah. is where we talk. This is where we talk logistics. Well...